Oh, so I'm very happy to uh, talk to faculty, to meet you at least virtually, and even though it is under these pandemic conditions to you again. So hello, Kusum. Kusum, Dakina, Santosai, Madhu, I can see you. So it's very nice to be, you, uh, be here with you. Okay, to begin with, as Titra said, I will speak very simply because uh, ideally we should have it bilingually. So I will welcome uh, questions in Sinhala. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I'm going to apologize for not being able to respond all the time in Sinhala because this is something, ironically, I have been studying only in English. So, but I okay, Technical watchers the so to answer your question, Chitra, what is Lankan English? Now, when I, I didn't really think much about our topic, but I always uh, use the term Sri Lankan English because uh, not for anything, but that just just because what I've got used to. So I apologize. I will continue to use the term Sri Lankan english in this uh, in this uh, conversation so sri lankan english is quite simply the variety of english that we speak in sri lanka uh, the this is actually part of uh, not just a social linguistic reality not something that is uh, that has evolved in our country one of the many languages that is uh, that is being spoken in this country it's also a field of study it's also an academic field of study. Uh, so uh, but, uh, if you look at the second part of your question, what is Lankanizing English? That is what we all speakers do. That's not part of academia. Academy, uh, academia is there to study how people speak English in Sri Lanka, if you like. And sometimes academia is limited in how it describes the complexity or the variation and the diversity of the way we of speakers of English in this country, the way we speak English in this country. Uh, so Lankanizing English happens very quickly, has happened over the years, as you know, from the time uh, we became a colony of, of uh, the United, uh, United Kingdom, the, the, uh, we became a British colony. English was introduced to us first as a, uh, the colonizer's language. Uh, the, the imperialist language, then it became a Sri Lankan language. So in the 21st century, I don't think anyone will, in any part of the world will say English only belongs to the West or English only belongs to England or English only belongs to England and Australia and uh, uh, America. English is a global language, but it is also a global language that has many faces, that has many uh, different uh, uh, faces to it, different um, aspects to it, and it is also a, a, a language that belongs to everybody. So Sri Lankans have English as part of our culture, whether we like it or not. We might not identify with it all the time. So, for instance, I have been my only job that I have really known is as an English teacher, as a uh, as a uh, lecturer in English, as an English teacher. Most of my work is done in English, but at the same time, my identity is very much as a first language singular speaker as well as a second language English speaker. So, uh, you know, English has is never a single identity for us. So, uh, uh, though sometimes we are kind of uh, push to think like that. Uh, sometimes this is some, some of the criticisms that come from, you know, society saying if you speak English, you're not a Sri Lankan, or if you don't speak English, you're a better Sri Lankan, that kind of uh, ideologies are there. Uh, so Lankanizing English, if you say, is uh, how we keep, uh, English keeps evolving through usage, I should uh, say. And um, uh, finally, I think what you asked was, is there a unique identity? All, uh, I think, varieties have the identity of the country that it is being and in. For instance, uh, in a country, uh, we have words and our accent, even some of our grammar, has come from the way we speak uh, English in Sri Lanka, influenced by, by our mother tongues. So it can, uh, Sinhala influences there in uh, Sri Lankan English, Tamil influences there. 
and uh, a, a lot of words have come from our local languages not only sinhala but from pali sanskrit from uh, tamil from malay from um, portuguese all these uh, uh, languages that have had some uh, presence in the country sometimes a, a brief presence sometimes a permanent presence have uh, influenced the way we speak english at the same time i must also uh, caution us uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, give a caveat a small caution about this idea of uniqueness i think we ha have um, uh, traditionally we are used to thinking of unique features when we talk about a sri lankan identity whether it's linguistic whether it's cultural just to say we are different from india for instance or other south asian countries this idea of uniqueness has to be a little uh, nuanced i think because there are lots of shared features but at the same time even our sri lankan identity is not one thing no it can be very different from for different people so uh, now the research in uh, sri lankan english is telling us this uh, we don't need to say it is only spoken in sri lanka this is a usage that is only unique to sri lanka in order to call it sri lankan english just the fact that sri lankans use it maybe more than other countries maybe slightly differently from other countries or pretty much the same way as other countries is enough to say this is also part of sri lankan english so uh, that's my uh, rather long answer to your question <laughs> and i if there are other questions that came out of my uh, <laughs> explanation i'll be happy to answer them can you hear me now ah, yes uh, uh, so thank you very much for your simple definition and uh, a uh, definition be definition between two terms really lang sri lankan english and lankanized in english and and uh, and we all are lankanized in english really and uh, as you said that uh, studying about uh, sri lankan english uh, is about it's it's to the academia or the academics really so from there can i ask another question from you can you name a few experts Uh, who have been uh, researching on this issue and uh, engage in associated with can you name a few uh, few names really and uh, their work about their work yes thank you chitra yes this has uh, sri lankan english the study of sri lankan english uh, as a you know as an academic discipline as a research topic has uh, has a long history actually longer than some other varieties of english in the world so i think the first person to talk about our unique uh, th this identity of sri lankan english is professor h a passe in the 1940s i think 1943 he wrote his phd dissertation in the university of london on what he called ceylon english i was so ceylon kelan kiyane so so sri lanka was referred to as ceylon so he uh, he wrote about ceylon english and in 1955 is the book that we have access to today uh, this is a rare book make it to the me we can't uh, find it much but i know there's a copy in the university of colombo uh, uh, resource centers uh, that it's called um, uh, it's also called ceylon english i think uh, in 1955 where he uh, describe uh, the syntax the grammar the vocabulary etc and also define different groups of english speakers in this country so he is one of the i would say he is like the father of sri lankan english then other names that are associated with sri lankan english this is professor tirukandaiya who was uh, at uh, the parent university of peradeniya he is the one who wrote most about sri lankan english in the 1960s 70s and 80s and he it's his term uh, lankan english is his term actually then we also have uh, uh, scholars like professor siromi fernando professor suresh kanagaraja then uh, professor manik gunasekara is the uh, uh, a name associated with the 21st century because her book came out in 2000 five uh, that is after professor uh, passes book 1955 this is the first full length book that came out uh, on sri lankan english which is titled i'll show you the book this is the book you might be familiar with it uh, it's called the post colonial identity of sri lankan english 
and that has uh, you know descriptions of the book the the language features the history and it's a comprehensive description of sri lankan english it's also a subjective description and uh, some of the questions i have got online before the session actually refer to some of the subjectivity which we can talk about later then another name that is associated with uh, the uh, more recently uh, two articles have appeared in the uh, after 2020 Uh, in um, in international journals, one is the Rutledge Handbook of World Englishers. Uh, uh, there's an article uh, on Sri Lankan English by Professor Dushanti Mendis and Professor Harshana Rambukwella, and uh, it's in this beautiful big uh, volume of. Uh, I'll show you the book. I borrowed it for a few days from a friend. It's not available in Sri Lanka, so it's a very big big Rutledge Handbook, and it has a chapter on Sri Lankan English. Uh, then uh, uh, another article uh, another chapter that came out is by tanya dr tanya ekanaika also called sri lankan english and these are possibly the the most latest publication of 2020 uh, tanya ekanaika is 2020 uh, mendy sandra mukwella is 20, uh, 2021 these are the two uh, publications that have come out internationally on sri lankan english and it gives an overview of the of the variety of english it's a, like a general introduction and talking about the different aspects and the facets of it if anyone wants to read it i'm happy to share a copy of this we have so, already got some questions and i think we can answer them later really and uh, okay. asking the names and the names of the books and uh, etc right okay. and uh, and you have mentioned a few uh, key figures of course the pioneers yeah. uh, really associated with sri lankan english and like professor pase and professor tirukandaya and professor shiromi fernando and a uh, few others i'm sure that you also have joined the link and we will talk about your research later really uh, before i would ask about your research about uh, in relation to sri lankan english uh, can you also i know that you brief on this but can you also uh, elaborate on the the fact that how sri lankan english is evolving in the 21st century okay uh, interesting question uh, as you do know, uh, as i said sri lankan english is a language that is among us it is spoken by a growing number of people uh, now if you look at the speakers of english 50 years ago අපි කොච්චර අධ්‍යාපන ක්‍රමයට බැන්නත් අපේ රටේ තියෙන අධ්‍යාපන ක්‍රමයට බැන්නත් however much we find fault with our education system we have to credit our education system for creating more language english language speakers in this country uh, we might uh, uh, so because 50 or 80 years ago there was only a very small number of people who spoke english in this country and they were the elite of the country now this uh, this english has changed the elite as well because uh, because of free education we have had more access to english also english as uh, the learning of english is driven from outside we know more and more it's a global language it's a language of education higher education uh, it's a language also of uh, international communication politics uh, it's a language of everything even medical facilities i think you can access them better if you know some english you know so because of the need for english i think also it has we have had a bigger number of people speaking english now than ever before so so in the 21st century i think one of the more interesting things that are happening in english is the use of english has spread to the digital sphere so earlier like a lot of the research that professor kandaya and of course professor pase was doing was limited to what people speak face to face or what is published in books now a lot of the language data if you look at what we say a speaker but we are a speak real life as language data such as uh, analyze lot of uh, use you can see happening online on um, uh, informal spaces like you know social media info social media like of facebook whatsapp and uh, uh, youtube and uh, those spaces 
as well as academic spaces like you know all these academic networks where we are forced to interact in english and this is happening more and more uh, this is happening a lot in the science you know the stem the stem uh, fields the science technology education and uh, engineering and medical fields but it's also now growing in the social sciences and the humanities now uh, when i started to teach you know in the university there was no pressure on the humanities to teach in english uh, we uh, all wanted to learn english i don't think any of us uh, in the humanities uh, uh, have thought english was not useful or we hated english everybody liked the idea of english and wanted to learn it but we were not under pressure to teach in english but look at us now with all these new education reforms we are even the humanities which is traditionally a, a faculty that teachers in in singhala and tamil in our local languages now we are under pressure to teach at least a little bit in english i don't know how that's going to play out but so if you look at the 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 you know, the digital sphere education sphere i think that's where the new uh, varieties the evidence of new uh, the change in sri lankan english is actually happening uh, also i mean media has exploded uh, in the 21st century it was defined more by print and television media now that media is also online no we have online media which is 24 hours so all these uh, areas we can see i i think are spaces in which we can see english sri lankan english developing not much research though not enough research <laughs> so yes, <laughs> Yes, thank you. And uh, your uh, response, of course, directs me to think of uh, how English is used in uh, English as a second language classrooms. But before I, before we would talk about this in detail, I would uh, like to draw your attention to another attention to another aspect, really. And as we all know, uh, we are all using some words like. Uh, Uh, instead of traffic light we would say color light i'm sure that uh, many of you have heard it in the many of you in the audience may have heard of it instead of traffic light we do use color light and there are a uh, not multiple number of words that we use in that way yes. would you like to elaborate on that ma'am yes thank you it's a very interesting question uh, so what you're referring to is vocabulary in sri lankan english basically um uh so vocabulary is a huge area in uh, sri lankan english and i'm glad you asked this question because naturally when we start talking about uh, sri lankan english the instant uh, the immediate reaction is to uh, talk about accent and pronunciation because accents and pronunciation are pro- probably the most powerful markers of uh, language variation you no know? we react immediately to accents but we actually don't know whether it's sri lankan english or uh, uh, british english or even american english when sometimes when it comes to words okay so your example is a wonderful example i want to see if it's in the dictionary color lights i hope it is because it's a, it's a very popularly used word uh, yes color lights is there traffic for fire traffic light here yes. so there's a whole book over 2000 words in this where we use a sri lankan term instead of a british or american term okay there is a lot of uh, you know informal um, uh, word lists on the web about the difference uh, difference uh, different uses of sri uh, british and american vocabulary okay so for instance you know uh, they say elevator uh, american say elevator british english says uh, lift but i think we i am developing these lists for sri lankan english as well now uh, one uh, area a place you can look for these words is uh, the mirisgala website uh, the writer of this uh, dictionary which i helped to edit michael mela has set up a website with follow up words that uh, uh, he is updating the website because it's a very rich and dynamic area also um Hello you are muted sorry sorry my finger touched my keypad i'm sorry okay so just to say that the vocabulary is something that evolves even on a daily basis pandemic has brought us new vocabulary okay 
Now we know about quarantine centers and quarantine hotels, right? Quarantine centers you go don't get in British English or American English because only we have quarantine centers. They have quarantine hotels now in the UK, right? Uh, so vocabulary actually is a very interesting area. Lots of new uh, different words we use, and the interesting thing is most of us don't know that this is Sri Lanka. We think it. in uh, with as well which is also this irony where some people say ah what you know we are not really speaking sri lankan english we are speaking british english okay so it's something we speak without really knowing that it has a very local identity right so shall we go on to the chat i think there's a question from uh, madhu what yes. one <laughs> yeah you uh, can a- answer that question okay two or three more okay Ma- i was wondering about the contributions of dr hemamala raswat and for his rai hana rai yes of course Yeah, I, I it was not an exhaustive list I uh, uh, I gave there of uh, the scholars and many number of scholars that uh, have worked on Sri Lankan English. In addition, I have to mention Professor Arjuna Parakrama's uh, name because he has written a full length uh, book on uh, on uh, you know the hegemony of Sri Lankan English, the hegemony of standard languages. Uh, so, Dr. Ratwat and uh, Prof. Rahim have joint uh, have joint publications as well as. uh more recently uh, um dr ratwatta has a uh, 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 article on sri lankan english uh they have contributed significantly and um uh i'll go, go to uh, madhu's question and then come to nadishka's question also tane can i is a musician and a uh, pianist have you any idea of her background in linguistics a uh, good question madhu i also you know we are a bit uh, I, i i must say i'm a bit i was a bit ignorant so when i saw this article somebody sent it to me a friend of mine uh, studying uh, abroad uh, in london and i said uh, when i saw sri lankan english by tani aknaika mage as the kude giya podda initially but then i realized she is actually uh, has completed a phd in linguistics at the university of edinburgh in addition to being an, a very accomplished pianist and um, it's a very long and uh, uh, rather an ambitious article um, encompassing all <laughs> about sri lankan english but it ends with a very uh, and i think that's her main contribution she discusses uh, music sri so, like the cont- contribution of music to sri lankan english or sri lankan english in uh, in popular music uh, Uh, I can I can forward that article to anybody who likes to read it. Okay, now I'll come to Nadish Kalaisis's uh, article. Is Michael Mailer's dictionary of Sri Lankan English not accepted as valid? I wouldn't be too uh, black and white about acceptance and validity uh, or anything like that um, because. Uh, uh, acceptance is sometimes a very subjective thing and our notions of validity are also very subjective um let me put it uh, i think suffice it to say if i say the the reaction to the dictionary is as you could imagine has been mixed uh, some people have embraced it as you know an extension of the way we speak, the valid of the way we speak and at the same time um uh where we didn't it where it didn't really work is when we uh when i think michael in the uh, in the introduction said it can be a resource for teachers as well but a lot of teachers who don't speak english as a uh, uh, one of their habitual languages did not relate to the words did not find the words uh within uh, as acceptable as part of their uh, uh their teaching uh, uh, practice you know uh, for teaching for the classroom so it's quite a mixed uh, and this uh, again goes to show how varied sri lankan english speakers are and this also uh, shows us that any book any any dictionary is a uh, is a repository to ends up being a repository of a particular variety variety of english so i think uh, michael uh, mela in his uh, introduction makes it quite clear this is the the variety that spoken by those who speak english habitually you know as one of their languages one of their you know first or second language but at the same time we are i remember trying to be as inclusive as possible and in that michael was much more willing to be more inclusive than uh, myself and the other editor we were very and important because we were thinking no no we have to draw a distinction between what is considered correct in the classroom and what might be considered 
by the majority, by most the teachers, as an error. So we were treading on all these fine lines. So it's very difficult to, you know, make a blanket statement about validity and acceptance uh, in a very general way. I hope I answered your question. Yes, uh, thank you. I think uh, this uh, question is associated with the uh, attitude towards Lankan English or Sri Lankan English as well, and uh, about the acceptance of the dictionary is uh, slightly related to our attitudes as well. And we will discuss the attitudes uh, later on, perhaps uh, time permit. And I would uh, move on to the, the schedule, of course, I would move on to my next question. You have been talking about the words, the vocabulary, really, related to Sri Lankan English or Lankan English. Would you also like to talk about uh, specific grammar, grammar points specific, uh, specific to Lankan okay. English? Yes, thank you, Chitra. And I can see in the chat, I think Madhu has referred to the idea of standardization, which is very important. Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, with grammar, there is very, I think there's little work done. Um, or that's negative, there's some work done. Uh, so some of the main grammar features could be our varied use of articles, our varied use of prepositions, if you like. Okay, now it's quite acceptable for us to start especially when we speak to drop our articles to drop the er uh, to drop the the, the or to add the er uh, and a the when it's uh, not um, you know it, when it's not part of the uh, the written formal written uh, uh, variety of any variety of english so uh, if you're going to talk about grammar most of the the features that are described in say professor manic and in um, uh, even Michael has a section on grammar in the introduction. Uh, most of these features are from spoken colloquial uh, usages, like the way we also flip sentences. I love Professor Manix. Uh, I think she starts the chapter with this example, where she says, raining know how to come. Okay, So that's a very informal, uh, it takes place in a very informal context. Uh, uh, people who are close to each other speak here. And uh, so there are loads of examples like that, um, where we, uh, one, one feature that gets repeated by all the scholars, including these two latest publications, is this feature called topicalization, where we uh, bring the subject of the, we bring the, we, start, we kind of say things like, um, um, that's a very well-known university, okay? Or, um, or Jayatilaka, uh, she's the head of the Department uh, of English at the moment, uh, where we bring the, what we, we are referring to Chitra and the university, and we, we, we kind of make a phrase out of it and then have another sentence about it, okay? But um, it's uh, interesting that uh, often these are presented as features of um, uh, of the variety without much qualification in the sense lots of scholars and this does not only happen with Sri Lankan English scholars it happens with world English scholars describing many varieties of English they don't say this is actually rather restrict to the to the very informal context we don't speak like that this informal context and uh, we don't necessarily speak like this in formal context and it's certainly not used in writing okay that's why you get the attitude that sometimes people say ah sri lankan english you're talking about errors that we make you no know, so how can you call it a variety when it's all errors we should speak british english but uh, more recent researchers in on uh, world Englishes have found a couple of articles have said one map one mistake that uh, sri, uh, world english scholars make is not to nuance this to say not to um, uh, or, and also that these are features of informal speech in ver any variety. So, for example, we can't just say topicalization is a Sri Lankan English feature because it is found in British English also. There is topicalization in British English in informal speech. Okay, And many examples of uh, uh, articles dropping in British, Ameri British and American speech as well. Okay? So this is an area where you know uh, no research area output is perfect. It doesn't cover all the uh, all the complexity of um, of a variety that is being studied. So this is these are things that need to come out in the future, I guess. Yeah. 
thank you thank you ma'am and uh, with that of course responds i i would like to draw your attention to uh, uh, the specific varieties as well and i would ask two questions really i know that you have been researching uh, uh, on this subject and would you like to add and uh, add and tell us about your researches uh, related to sri lankan english as well as would you also like to uh, elaborate on the varieties now for example we have uh, uh, different varieties in the world and which are accepted unfortunately the the particular variety called sri lankan english is still limited to uh, the academia to talk okay. about it okay. and yeah, uh, and uh, yes would you like to talk about it yeah thank you chitra i think uh, this idea of sri lankan english indian english even china english thai english korean english these labels have mostly been given by academics world english scholars linguists social linguists and across the board this is not only a problem in sri lanka okay because we are very good at criticizing also in sri lanka vitra me wenne anikata wal wala mehema baninne api vitra api bahasawata baninne that kind of thing right uh, there is um, i think uh, across the board there is not much awareness of these labels and that can be I, I, and i don't want to pin it down you know the ignorance of the common man there are issues there are issues with all these labels because when we as you rightly pointed out when you were leading up to your question there are various ways uh, various sri lankan englishes so one uh, one experience i would like to share with you is which also has some relevance to the speak english our way campaign is when we were talking about sri lankan english you know the dictionary came out in 2007 2009 2010 the government had this drive to localize uh, or to promote um, speech teaching or speech in the classrooms for children you know and uh, i must caution you that the the, the speak english our way is the slogan that was used briefly and then uh, the project actually abandoned you using the stop this so again the project was actually called english as a life skill uh, and they abandoned this uh, slogan for a very good reason and as you said like there were people who were uh, who were made into posters you know they were they were they were susantika they were susantika jaising have a have a uh, athlete have a international athlete then sanat jaisu we have a cricketers talking about how they they are confident enough to speak english in any way they can so the message there was to to promote or to encourage anyone who has this fear of english not to be scared anymore because we can have local ideals we can we can identify ideal speakers in our local community who have uh, who are not from that uh, you know english speaking class the old english speaking class who know english anyway but of course this slogan you know a manne for the gira for the card kind of thing the slogan was also taken very negatively by very conservative elements you know and there is a lot of linguistic conservatism around also i must uh, uh, say where they said uh, ah this is a way of promoting substandard english for the already underprivileged you know that this course also came out and people uh, in the project took it very seriously and actually they abandoned the slogan particularly when uh, so um, 29 2009 as you know was also the end of the war and when jaffna opened up and there were meetings in jaffna to promote uh, sri lankan english there as well the academics in jaffna university said you know what you are talking about uh, sri lankan english is very much a singular based sri lankan english what about the tamil influence in sri lankan english and one academic actually made a speech i remember which was relayed to me later by one of the people in the in the project who said you know this can be seen as a way of you know colonizing uh, trying to colonize jaffna trying to singleize and you know discredit our our own uh, linguistic heritage so that was taken very seriously at the time and we stopped talking about speak english our way but the damage was done i think because in the newspapers people are going to town saying how can you speak english our way and that brings me to a question somebody emailed me and here this question uh, thank you niroshan if you are there uh, for emailing me the question beforehand 
Uh, and uh, he uh, gave a nice context because I think when we talk about these things, we also have to contextualize it. So when somebody says there's something called Sri Lankan English, we have to say in what context did he say? What was his language background? What are his experiences? What are the you know the traumas he's had about language? You know all that comes to play. So uh, he uh, he has said that uh, long ago there was this discussion when he was studying that. Um, uh, it is Solicitor General uh, of time, I think this is 10 years ago, around the same time as the English as a Life Skill Project uh, when it was gaining ground. He had said, if you want to be a good lawyer, English is one of the key areas you should improve. At this point, speak English our way is not an option. Okay. So there, I don't know who the Deputy Solicitor General was, but this uh, kind of resonates with the study that Professor uh, Raihana Rahim and uh, Professor Ma Mani Gunasekhar did in the early 1990s, where they interviewed a, a lot of politicians as well as, uh, you know, uh, corporate sector leaders, leaders in the corporate sector, you know, CEOs of companies, etc. And even, you know, ministry, high, uh, high up ministry officials. And they were asking them about Sri Lankan English, you know. So this term was very alien to them, okay, understandably, because it's a term that is, has a restricted use to academics, really, right? And then uh, Professor Manik was a wonderful presenter, as you remember. I went for the launch of this election. I remember uh, her saying, everybody across the board in the corporate sector, they said, there's nothing called Sri Lankan English, what are you talking about? I speak British English. And everybody said, we, what we speak is British English. I speak British English. What we need is British English. And then when she was interviewing him across his, you know, his big desk with the phone and all, those days, phones on the table. No? And the phone rang and he picked up the phone and said, ah, hello, my how? You know, so he was, he switched to Sri Lankan English. I mean, he, obviously that is his first language. That is what he speaks. Okay. And you can see the singular syntax as well as the, uh, the Sri Lankan vocabulary they are machang how instead of how are you that kind of thing but um, I think the deputy solicitor general is also coming from that kind of place where for him speaking English our way signals Sri Lankan English which signals bad English errors right because at the legal profession we have a problem with, uh, with uh, a lot of lawyers not uh, having enough English we don't have enough English speakers in the law in the in the law fraternity, and uh, I think there is occasionally a lot of noise made about you know developing language skills among emerging young lawyers, right? So it's not. Uh, Thank you very much, and uh, <laughs> your anecdote about the dialogue really, the mm -hmm. telephone conversation, also directs me to further ask you about your research in detail. I know that uh, I personally do know that you have done some. Uh, in detail the uh, researchers about uh, Sri Lankan English. Also, I want you to uh, associate uh, your anecdote, the co telephone conversation that you took as an example, to uh, discuss about uh, Sri teaching English at schools, in school classrooms. And uh, in our, in, so do we teach English there? Do we teach Sri Lankan English or else uh, uh, do the teachers allow te learners to use Sri Lankan English, etc.? Thank you. Yes. Right. Thank you, Chitra. That's an area that I'm very interested in exploring right now. Okay. So, right now, my PhD studies are based on that. So, I don't know anything yet. I haven't started doing my data collection yet. But that's something I would love to explore. But from experience, what I know is uh, there are a lot of teachers. I mean, we tend to make generalizations about teachers of English in uh, in the country. Uh, and that's another generalization like Sri Lankan English. So having said that, I have to um, you know, point out that there are lots of different teachers of different levels of ability, skill, teaching, excellence, as well as awareness of Sri Lankan English, right? Because there are some teachers who are teaching and training uh, teachers with master's degrees who have learned about Sri Lankan English and they're quite aware of the existence. They're quite aware of the fact that they speak Sri Lankan English. But in, in, a, uh, in the classroom, I think what has been going on <laughs> in, for so many years is that in practice, we teach Sri Lankan English. Okay, So the, the, the speech of teachers is generally Sri Lankan English in the, uh, in the conventional mainstream classroom. Okay. Uh, 
that's when they speak English, right? Because often uh, teachers speak, uh, teach uh, English in singular. Uh, at the same time, if you look at the textbooks, they do describe standard English grammar. But if you look at the dialogues, if you look at some of the reading passages, even if you look at some of the language explaining the grammar points, I can see a lot of Sri Lankan English in it. Okay, so it's very hard to separate. Say, okay, this is Sri Lankan English and this is standard British English. It's much easier to see it as a continuum, a fluid thing that where we, you know, go up and down without really knowing that we're doing it. Now, when I went to my, for my studies to the University of Reading, which is quite a, you know, a conservative university, I could say, you know, all my professors spoke uh, RP. I was al always surprised at the way that I was uh, uh, I was realizing some of the things I write, some of the things I say are actually Sri Lanka. Now I'm thinking I'm speaking standard British English, not the accent, but you know the vocabulary, the grammar structures are you know uh, not Sri Lankan because I was very conscious of the fact that you know I'm being assessed by non-Sri Lankans. Then I was oh, I'm using this this was in Sri Lankan. And later when I checked with uh, Michael, because soon after my studies, I started working with uh, Michael on the dictionary, helping Michael with the dictionary. There is a lot of things I thought were British, were actually Sri Lanka, right? A lot of usages, words, uh, grammar structures, etc. Um, uh, I'm glad you asked the question because often when we talk about Sri Lankan English in the classroom, the conversation is only limited to vocabulary, to accents, and then automatically we say going to you know talking about elocution elocution classes etc but uh, i think there's a very good study to be done on you know textbooks which are now uh, to our credit are all locally produced uh, all our curriculum material are locally produced syllabuses textbooks workbooks teachers guides are all locally produced by local experts there is a lot of Sri in english everywhere okay so uh, it's interesting to see how it it's, going, it's not limited to, you know, the colloquial sphere, as informal colloquial sphere, but also to, you know, the educational sphere and the formal. Yeah. I'm very interested in, you know, research published by our local academics, uh, because there are certain things, even if you're, you know, writing a paper uh, uh, in the sciences, in uh, plant sciences, for instance, how do you name plants in uh, indigenous uh, plants and trees, etc.? If you don't use the local words, no. So these boundaries are are very porous. They're they are they are you know you can transgress the boundaries. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you. Before we move on to a Q and A session, really, we have some comments as well here, and uh, we have one comment uh, regarding the misconception about uh, the program uh, titled. Uh, speak English our way and it's uh, it's right as it is rightly presented here in the comment really it's based on the uh, the negative attitude was uh, based on this conception about the program as I believe and uh, uh, before I, before we move on to the Q&A session would you also like to uh, uh, further elaborate on the attitudes as well really okay thank you that's what i've been reading up on for the last 20 years attitudes towards world english including sri lankan english uh, attitudes are across the world you know we have particular attitudes towards our own mother tongue our own languages local languages uh, uh, majority languages minority languages as well as english and uh, when we talk about attitudes a lot of people don't theorize what attitudes are. attitudes can be awareness part of awareness attitudes can be part of acceptance attitudes can be beliefs attitudes will obviously intersect with things like ideology and you know our notions of power etc uh, or uh, how we perform power and more recently we are looking at attitudes as performances you know how we construct attitudes based on who we are talking to right so uh, sometimes uh, and attitudes are fluid also they're very dynamic they are fluid they can go from uh, from negative sometimes to positive right but one um, uh, one area that has not been investigated as far as I can see in the research, you know, not only in Sri Lankan English, but in World English Research in general, is that we don't look enough at attitudes as, you know, the the the, the most post-structuralist way. 
we look at attitudes as based on what the structural features of uh, of a language evoke in us so for instance if we make a particular grammar mistake or a particular vocabulary uh, 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 anomaly or uh, we pronounce a certain word differently based on that person the uh, identity we will have a different attitude okay so for instance when uh, when a student speaks really you know uh, uh, um, english with a lot of grammar mistakes we might penalize that student we might look down on the student and make judgments about where that uh, student learned english make judgments about where he or she comes from where what her parents do for a living but if sanat uh, sanat um, that Jai. Jai Surya, sorry. Jai. Sanat Jai Surya makes us uh, makes the same errors when he's being interviewed in the international arena by an international interviewer for an international news uh, story. We might not consider them that important because we are looking at him as a national hero, as a cricket hero. Okay, so that's why I say attitudes are very not always fixed, but. at the same time uh, the research says like the traditional research that comes attitude studies comes from social psychological uh, work usually uh, they say that some attitudes you can be uh, can be uh, put in you as a child and it's very hard to get rid of them right but at the same time we also have to look at the fluidity of attitudes and we take on attitudes we take on uh, negative attitudes we take on positive attitudes according to the context and according to who we are interacting with and attitudes can be co-constructed while you're you're uh, interacting with someone yeah so that's what actually i'm interested in how we talk about sri lankan english based on who we are talking to yes sorry yeah. did i complicate your question or not <laughs> yeah you are you're right uh, because uh, if uh, sanat uh, jayasurya makes the same mistake we would take it as a fashion and we would follow that so that's our attitude as well if i'm not mistaken mm. and uh, and we would uh, we would blame blame the student for the same mistake we would uh, we would really uh, be little the same be little the speaker for the same mistake but if a well known person or a celebrity just the same mistake yeah. we would uh, follow up that as the fashion really. yeah yes uh, with that we would uh, i would like to open the forum for very for um, uh, for the for a discussion but i would uh, expect you to ask uh, questions in uh, both in sinhala and english you are welcome to ask questions in sinhala and english or to make any comments in sinhala and english but please make sure that this discussion uh, should be a very constructive uh, cordial friendly discussion yes you are welcome to ask questions Yes, and mute yourself and ask a question. I would love to hear a question in Sinhala, and then we can go to the chat box. There are some questions. Mama, me, Mama Suji, me, 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 මගේ හැරගන්න මම මේක අහන්නේ අපි ශ්‍රී ලංකන් ඉංග්‍රීසි කියලා අපි ඇත්තටම මේ කැරැක්ටරිස්ටික්ස් ටික කොහොමද වෙන් කරගන්නේ මේ ලර්න ඉරර්ස් වලින් කියන එක මම තමයි හැමම හැමතිස්සෙම හිතන එකක් දැන් අපි ලර්න අපි හිතමු ජය සූරිය හරි කවුරු හරි අපි මොකක් හරි අර අපි කියන අර ස්ටෑන්ඩර්ඩ් ඉංග්‍රීසි වලට ඒක අනුව හරි මොකක් හරි අපි ග්‍රැමටිකල් මිස්ටේක් එකක් තියෙනවා කියලා කියමු ඒතර ඒක අපි අපි එක කැරැක්ටරිස්ටික් එකක් කැරැක්ටරිස්ටික් එකක් හැටියට පාවිච්චි කරන්නේ නැහැ නේ අයිඩෙන්ටිෆයි කරගන්නේ නැහැ නේ එතකොට කොහොමද මේ මේ වෙනස හදාගන්නේ මේ දෙකේ අපි කොහොමද අර ලර්න ඉරර්ස් වෙන් කරගන්නේ කැරැක්ටරිස්ටික්ස් ඔෆ් ස්ටෑන්ඩර්ඩ් මොකක් හරි ඉංග්‍රීසි කියන එක දෙන්න ඒක ඔක්කොම මැණික් වෙනස එකක් කියලා පොතෙත් මේක කතා කරනවා අර ලර්න ඉරර්ස් කියන ඒවා ඒ ඒ ඒවා අපි කැරැක්ටරිස්ටික්ස් හැටියට අරගත්තොත් අපි මං හිතන්නේ වෙන පාරකයන් එතකොට කැරැක්ටරිස්ටික්ස් කොහොමද අපි මේ වරයිටි එකේ අඳුර ගන්නේ කියන එක එකක් අනිත් එක මට මේ මේ දෙකම කම්බයින් කරලා මම අහන්නම් මැඩම් අනිත් එක තමයි අර ටෙලිෆෝන් කොන්වර්සේෂන් එක සම්බන්ධ කියපු තැන එතකොට ඒක දැන් අපි කිව්වොත් හලෝ මචං කියලා අපි ටෙලිෆෝන් එකට ආන්සර් කරොත් 
ඒක ශ්‍රී ලංකන් වරයිටි ශ්‍රී ලංකන් ඉංග්‍රීසි වල කැරැක්ටරිස්ටික් එකක්ද කියලා මට හිතෙනවා. ඒක අපි සාමාන්‍ය කරන කෝඩ් මික්සින්ග් එකක් හරි, කෝඩ් ස්විචින්ග් එකක් හරි ඕන ටර්ම් එකක් අපි හිතන පාවිච්චි. ඒතර ඒක ශ්‍රී ලංකන් ඉංග්‍රීසි කියලා අපි ඒක කැරැක්ටරයිස් කළ යුතුද? අන්න ඒ ඒ ඒ කන්ෆියුෂන් එක තමයි මට තියෙන්නේ. පොඩ්ඩක් මම කැමති ඒ ගැන. රයිට්. තැන්ක් යු සුජීව. වි වාස් සම් හරි සංකීර්ණ ප්‍රශ්නය ඔය ඉතා හොඳ සහ සංකීර්ණ ප්‍රශ්නය ඔය. ඒකට මට තියෙන්නේ මේ එක උත්තරයයි අපි භාෂා සහ භාෂා වෙනස්කම් දිහා බලන දෘෂ්ටිකෝණය ගැන. This is how we view languages the nature of language. This comes from that perspective. Uh, if we talk about code switching as different from Sri Lankan English features, that's not a Sri Lankan English feature. So I'm going with your last comment and but if you don't mind if you say okay that's code much like code switching okay we have enough evidence in academia i, I, I mean i can refer to professor david disanaka who is a much like is now single and english both right so it's a way we look at language so the the structuralist linguistics approach will tell us that you know there's a very fine uh, distinction between that there's a big boundary between one uh, language a and language b So if you use a word from uh, Sinhala in English, that's considered a code switch or a code uh, example of code mixing. But if you look at more post-structuralist, post-modernist views of language, they look at this idea of language just being very fluid. You know, you're not always sticking to one language, and it's not a you know a big big a big uh, transition if you use another language purely because most of us have more than one language in us. So that's why translanguaging has come about. The the multilingual turn has come about. So before the multilingual turn, we kind of saw. so languages as having this bounded uh, bounded uh, you know boundaries are very very well defined so we talk about code switching i'm not saying code switching and code mixing is not valid it is one thing is uh, if you okay so we you know leave out the philosophical discussion of uh, of um, languages we could one way of defining as a sri lankan english example as opposed to a co- code mix or a code switch is when it becomes fairly routinized fairly well uh, uh, it has a widespread use with a consensual meaning up among most of the users okay so machang english among english speakers has become like mate like we has become like mage yalua etc uh, so machang is part of sri lankan english um, at the same time uh, if you go back to your earlier question which is a very valid question how do we distinguish between errors and sri lankan english i would again say it's contextual now there's a very good um, a comment i think by niroshan patberi about the misconception of uh, speaking english ah way is the so called broken english some people saw it as validating what they see as broken english right i am doing this is a very pretentious thing to do but i i also question this idea of broken english because it if you are uh, if you are marking a students o level exam paper which as you know has a lot of grammar it starts with preposition you know then we are looking at accuracy so you know that the kind of accuracy that is expected so even accuracy is contextual no if you are uh, an exam a grammar paper then that kind of conformity to what the grammar book say and the grammar book might be something that came from you know um, the, the the global west then we go by those rules but if you are communicating it's once again a reaction i think that's wrong and that's my reaction kind of so this whole idea of accuracy is also um, you know what is strictly accurate what is strictly wrong also i think we have to question a little bit but what does it mean to the teacher in the classroom is a question we have to see within the context we have to uh, you know examine within the context i think i bhuvan dilini mata vinadiya katha karanna puluwan da mon saman hello saman ane kiyanda dilini me me dinili wada attara me sujeeva sa aacharya sujeeva hetti arachchi mahatya matu karapu prashna itam wedaga මේ වාගේ දේශනේ මට ඉතාම තවත් කාරණයක් ඉතාම පැහැදිලි වුණා මේ ඔබ එක එක දවසක් විතරක් දැක්ක මේ සමන් සිත් දර ඔක්කොක් මම ගන්නේ ඔහු එක තැනකදී කියනවා ප්‍රථම භාෂාව හැඟීමයි සිංහල ඉංග්‍රීසි දෙමළ යනු 
अपगे हंगीम वलट दून विविध शनिक परिवर्तन आए मांग हितन मटे कारणे ओबगे में संगवादे तुले अपे इतना सोयरो मत करूं प्रश्ने इलागड़े में सुजीव से मत करे बो देवल में सेलु देते को बदुन न उत्तर में मांग हितनों आ में दीर का काले कट पासे में ओबे रूपे अध्यक्ष का अपे बहुम दीर का काली न असुरु कर पुए मट आई थिंक बट प्रोफेसर म ताहोरु कराने वाले कला इलागट ओबी दानुमें लोके पोषणे कराने हरी मसातुरी में कई ताम सातुरु दाय का अवस्था वक नोदन्ना बहो दे इगेनगत्ता दानवा के लहिता में बुद्धे ओलुत गुड़ाक पैदलियों ना गुड़ाक किस तेरी दिल्ली आई थिंक व्हाट प्रोफेसर महाचार्य तुम्हारे पावस क्यूए अपितु वैदिपुर to take it, to say it in different words really yeah okay go ahead perhaps yeah. savan hari ma santosh madam i have a question hi Sujiva. this is sujeeva i think uh, sujeeva can you please uh, like uh, give I, i'll give you the chance the next time and she's going to answer the question, respond to professor saman's question okay. चित्र जैतिया अतः में श्रीलंका के इंग्रीसी सहा, श्रीलंका की कृत इंग्रीसी पीली बंदे में प्रवेश सामान क्यों हुआ कि अपनी नोदान ने बहुत देवल देना गाता, देना आई के लिए हिता के नहीं तो पुदेवल तहा उरु कर गाता, पीठ प्रकाशन का कामी टू वेनुइंग दिले नहीं हारी में स्तुति वान तो इना ओबटे बतू मेटे दिखा ल ठीक है देने वाले पटांग रह गए ना विचार दूरी से घटा पैतृक ना एक वो बे पैतृक ना देनु मैं मातू करा इतना मालांग का औरत जब पे आचार चित्र जाए थी लेकर तो ये वेनु ही आप इसी रोज़ दिन आगे स्तुति है वो बट मैं आवास्ता ही पूर्ण करना मांगिताने तब गेटलू ऐसी आपे आचार सेब सुजीवा ट Thank you, Mata Vastava Dunnata. Madam, my question might sound a little stupid because um, I'm going to ask you how important it is uh, for us to have our own variety in this current global context of, uh, you know, where everything is interna internationalizing, you know, including uh, language. Is it, is it important for our identity? Um, because right now, all kinds of identities are you know blurred and we are kind of uh, mm -hmm. all of us are be becoming native citizens so how important it is for us to have our own variety very good question thank you uh, sujeeva for bringing it to this current you know highly inter in interconnected uh, international world that we are part of we can't help but be a part of it I think this is reflected in Sri Lankan English mm -hmm. also. Sri Lankan English is not confined to national borders. It, it, uh, to begin with, I think we have Sri Lankan English in our diasporas, Sinhala diaspora as well as Tamil, all Sri Lankan diaspora because it continues to be spoken in other countries. And also, uh, at the same time, I think you have a point in saying, how important it is for us to talk about Sri Lankan English. I think if you are talking about Sri Lankan English, we have to acknowledge the fact that it has, has to transgress, you know, national boundaries as well, reflecting the realities that we live in. So when we say Sri Lankan, if you are looking at it in a very narrow parochial, you know, nationalist sense, then I think we are going to fall into trouble. But at the same time, you can't, remove a national identity as someone said it's part of your emotion it's part of your cultural emotional psychological ideological makeup so uh, i think it's always it always has some validity but we must not make it the only truth it, we must not make it the you know the all-powerful mm -hmm. truth that's my take on it i don't know if i answered your question Sujiva. thank you you did ma'am you did yeah. because language is always connected to national uh nationalism and identity yeah. uh, 
all our identities are you know huge part made huge part of part of uh, language it's we are who we speak <laughs> Yeah, so exactly. we are judged by how we speak and what we speak. I think you did. Thank you. Thank you, madam. It was nice to hear you speak. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Dinali, Dinali means. Dinali means. Mangan. Dinali means. Oh, Anjali. Oh, I thought I was right. Anjali. Oh, I thought I was right. Last year, Kahan and Emily means. Mang. Goda. Kahan. Like that. Pass. Miss. Me. Again. Again. Goda. Satu. Two. No. Dinali means. Thank you, Anjali. ಚಿತ್ರೀನಲಿ <laughs> Dinali, do yes, you, you can go me? ahead, yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, pardon me if my question doesn't directly relate to your topic. Uh, I really want, but I really want to ask this question because it's a Devena Prashna for me. A couple of years ago, a foreigner asked me whether we really use uh, English as a second language in Sri Lanka. Hey, Mokudde, now... Yeah, I mean, if it is a second language, I mean, according to the definition of second language, we can't do without English in certain domains. English if it's a second language. So what she wanted to know was whether it's becoming more a foreign language here than a second language. That's my question, Vinali. Okay, thank you, Indira. I think these labels, first language, second language, foreign language, third language, have been put on us. <laughs> put on us mostly yeah, by them. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And it has been put on, uh, put on us to further, you know, uh, I think language teaching industry ends to begin with. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a way of categorizing, you know, it's a kind of a colonialist categorization. But uh, these are... Per- pervasive these uh, these categorizations still hold we still use them we have uh, acquired these labels and we use them but uh, uh, there is a bit of a debate now if you uh, read uh, uh, some uh, i think um, uh, this a uh, couple of academics from germany from uh, the, the justice lieber university who have published on sri lankan english they have referred to sri lanka as a second language english speaking country okay and that is upset a lot of us <laughs> because it's not simple no that's a oversimplification this very complex identity and the complexities of usages of sri lanka english in sri lanka and the diversity of speakers because for some a small elite group english is a first language and that's not an elite group anymore because the local elite is now a bilingual single speaking elite right elite right so they spoke english as they learned it from their parents because the parents and grandparents were educated in the colonial tradition in english and for them learning sinhala was not an option okay they may speak a little bit of english sinhala but they spoke mostly english then there's us who spoke english as a second language some of us learned english at a younger age some learned at a later age. now i learned english i didn't speak any english in my early childhood my parents didn't speak to me in english and i le- learned english only after about 10 or 11 there was english around us so i had input but i only actually remember speaking english only when i was about 12 or 13 so i am a very much by, by that definition i spoke english after singhala so th- by def- that definition i am a second language speaker right but we also have sp- uh, many people in our country who don't have access to learning english who don't hear english even in the english class they might not have a teacher in their village school for years for decades they might not have an english teacher so uh, they don't hear english they don't listen to english they don't even see english notice board so for them it's a foreign language so we ha- we can't have blanket country wide categories when it comes to languages like that particularly english and now they're saying the same about british and the book that i was referring to the rafael chan book in the introduction the editor andy kirkpatrick says uh, i've read elsewhere that china has half of china's population is technically a language english language learner we are talking 500 million 
people. Okay, so five hundred million people in China in English. Out of that, more than two hundred and seventy-five million people are users of English. Okay, so even in China, we can't call the entire country English as a foreign language country. So there is a group that is now learning English. They will teach their children English, and English will have a much stronger presence in their life than a foreign language does. Okay, so these are very complex. All these labels are essentially. I mean, I think any label and any uh, definition tries to capture some reality, but by essence, they are also limited. You no. Know? So I think we have to be aware of uh, it's our task to kind of deconstruct these labels also and make it you know this reality. Thank you, Dinali. Thank you. Anuruddha, is it for? Uh, are you asking a question? Yes, Anuruddha. Oh, Anuruddha, can. Hey, my. Question for Anuruddha. Can you share with us? Hana. Then, Api. Then, our Chujiwa ki weke my matlab tin ne. Then, me me. ශ්‍රීලංකන් ඉංග්‍රීසි කියලා වෙනම එකක් අපි හඳුනා ගැනීම සහ වැරදි සාමාන්‍ය වෙන භාෂා වැරදි කියන එක අතර තියෙන ප්‍රශ්නයක් තියෙනවා නේ කොච්චර කිව්වත් ඒ කියන්නේ ඒක අරක තියෙනවා ඒ අපි දන්නේ නැහැ කොයි කොතනින්ද ඒ භාෂා වැරදි භාෂා වැරද ස්ටයිල් එකේ හරි කොහොම හරි භාෂා වැරදි කියන තැනින් මේ අරක ප්‍රමිතියක් සහිත එකක් විදිහට කොයි විදිහටද පිළිගන්නේ ශ්‍රී ලංකන් කියලා කොටසක් කියන කෑල තියෙනවා දැන් සාමාන්‍යයෙන් ගත්තොත් इंग्लिश भाषा वे सजीवी निशा एक जनमाध्य भाषा वक्त प्रमति गीमाक्रीसियामेरिकन हरी ब्रिटिश हरी मनो हरी लोक 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 वेनास्कान प्रमति गीमाक भाषा मे प्रमति गीमट जनमाध्य भाषा प्रमति गीमट पारंपरिक लोक स्टैंड the media can be it's a very varied area even in sri lanka you know you can uh, listen to uh, uh, media broadcast even in one channel if you take the state channel from 30 years ago to now it has changed a lot in terms of the language in, in the terms of vocabulary in terms of the accents in terms of how they you know the levels of formality that is used we can see this in singhala we can see this in tamil we can see this in english also there is nothing called a global standard of english for media i think that's a that's a fiction right because the media is very useful media is very powerful and it's a very powerful force to kind of make a mockery of our ideas of you know our anachronistic ideas of standard outdated ideas of standard because media as chitra also pointed out media is one space which uses language for communication if you communicate and if you communicate in the way that the majority appreciates is is attracted to that's what works uh, so if you break grammar <laughs> traditional grammar rules and it works it's fine media will 
endorse it and media feeds into what we consider is accepted and accept or not acceptable in english uh, so the other one <laughs> it's the nice idea i, lo- I like your idea where well, sri lankan english is a way of justifying uh, errors made by our english speaking elite forefathers <laughs> and they're packaging it as sri lankan english and justifying it as a different variety of english lovely idea <laughs> i will i'll say it with a laugh only <laughs> okay right right man hitane din elimi answer kara question negra tava durata question thiyenawa nan you are welcome to ask questions please there are some on the chat box it yes sir if yes. Uh, like if we don't uh, have questions we can move on to some chat messages uh, i have one question dinali yes madhubashini yes madhu Connected yeah madhu to uh, what sujeev also asked where do we draw the line between learner errors and um, you know uh, different standards yeah, in english yeah in lankan english yeah. i think i'll relate that to what you said it's really a continuum and it depends on where we decide exactly. to draw the line that's a danger I mean, some people might draw the line. For example, your corporate people might draw the line quite high. Some of us who are into this idea of Sri Lankan English will draw it quite low. So there's never going to be a right answer to that. It all depends on yeah, where yeah. we think it's going to draw the line. I would say where communication breaks down, consider that an error. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And also, and also, uh, dip. Dip. Sorry. Go on, Chair Madhu. Oh, also, his question about hello, Machang. How I think the Sri Lankan English was in the how, not in the Machan. <laughs> I would say it is both. Maybe yes. Dinali, <laughs> yeah. yes, sir. Ah, no, how old are you? Shivani, Lankan. Yeah, Shivani. Yes, Shivani. Okay, uh, not a question really, but based on the questions that have been coming up. and also that lovely a lovely phrase hello machan how i would like just like to have a look at that and also first to start off i would like to say uh, these are my uh, my thing on uh, sri lankan english okay so wh- how did sri lankan english come about is okay so we had the british english which was in contact with sinhala and language for sinhala and tamil and also the other uh, other words that we use in our uh, mother tongue our local varieties uh, been in contact for uh, over a long period of time and then we started uh, it was inevitable that these uh, other uh, other languages also influence uh, the english that came to us originally from the british so i think at that time they were using british the, the english that they were using at that time was more in line with the british english but over the years with the contact with the sinhala and tamil languages slowly we we, we began to change so uh, i think uh, within the sri lankan english there are all lots of different Uh, aspects that we have to recognize i think to understand all these problems that uh, that we uh, we uh, have had in this uh, conversation so one idea that came up was about the expert user and the language the errors so yes there is uh, we have to accept that because there are certain type of uh, language or learn a language that will not be accepted in a certain forum so we are actually we, we as teachers i would say we promote our students to go to that um, area which is called uh, accepted uh, i won't go into details of how to uh, distinguish that but then also i want to talk about this uh, when we talk or when we write there are different because of these other languages coming into play in sri, sri lankan english so we have things like code switching we have things like borrowing which are very much now part of sri lankan english and why it ha- english has become sri lankan english because of borrowing because of sco- code switching and also of course because of certain grammatical uh, features that have now come in so if we go back to that hello machang how i think that's a wonderful three word phrase so there you have um, so hello machang here we have a borrowing i say that's a borrowing because many people are using it uh, while talking english as the main language or the Uh, matrix language or the uh, the the bigger language uh, because we can have two languages working at the same time in any any conversation or in any sentence that we can have part of the we, we do this all, all the time we have part of the sentence is english part of the sentence is singular so in hello machang we have just one word coming in there um, so machang is i would say because most of us use this word or other the uh, male <laughs> um, it's a more male uh, so those things also matter So there are women also who use Machang, 
but then uh, so we, we it's, it's an accepted word now in Sri Lankan English so so it's it, I would say it's a borrowing and then how as um, was mentioned earlier how, without saying how are you that is Sri Lankan English so it's a beautiful sent um, uh, question or a greeting which has incorporated incorporated many of these functions so there is no code switching as I as I see here because it's, I would consider that machang as a borrowing here and machang is not not singular it's it has come from uh, uh, India so we have it's not only the singular words we have words from Sanskrit Pali so we have reborrowed from words that we use in singhala we, uh, in the sense uh, the Sanskrit Pali or uh, Arabic words that were used in singhala are now also once again borrowed back into Sri Lankan English um, so yeah then also there is the majority minority uh, base also on Sri Lankan English because there is a minority speaking a particular variety and a majority speaking another variety so basically we've got to understand there are varieties uh, then there is the singular based variety Tamil based so there is a whole lot of uh, uh, features coming in aspects coming in to this uh, beautiful thing called Sri Lankan English that we are using now Thank you. Thank you, Shivani. Yes, I agree with you. Thank you, Shivani. And uh, let's, uh, le before allowing any more questions, uh, can we just uh, answer some of the comments on the chat messages? Yes, let me go up. I think some of these have been, uh, yeah, Madhu's I answered, Nadishka's I answered. We have Shehan Peris's question, if you... Shehan Peris? Ah, yes. Hasn't there been a tremendous influence of Portuguese and Dutch influences, especially for vocabulary nouns, Almira, Brinjal, and even uh, focus? Yes, of course. I think this is what Shivani was referring to. Lots of languages have contributed to Singhala and they have been borrowed into English. So, borrowing is very much a world English process of varieties of English. There are lots of different processes in which we borrow uh, languages. I will borrow, borrow from other languages. One is borrowing. It could be coinages also. Yeah. There's also another question related to the 1956 uh, Singhala Only Act. Uh, right. The question is about whether there's any relationship between the 1920, 1956 Act and uh, SL English. Oh, that's a very good uh, question. I haven't actually thought of it uh, in terms of. Uh, the 1956 Act, Act and you know, the growth of... I think this gives some political background to the emergence of Lankan English as well. Okay. Where is the question? Uh, it's... Uh, okay. yeah, shall I read out? Uh, yes, please. Do you think 1956 Singhala only Act to the evolution of Sri Lankan English? Because we focus more on vernacular education for a long time. Possibly, yes. I think if we contact... I, I think what is meant, I think uh, if Shehan Piris is there, and of course you can raise the question, please, in the audience. Question is, Ahan Pulwan Shehan Piris. Ma'am, it's me. Shehan Piris. Oh. Yeah, I think it's Ellen. No, it's Shehan Piris. Shehan Piris is there. Okay. No, no, Chitra, somebody else raised the question. Yes, ma'am, it, yes, ma it's me. I'm, I just, I'm a teacher of English. I just started my master's at Sabaragam. So it was just a personal question it, regarding this. We are doing this research on that. Uh, is it, uh, did this 1956 single only act, which subsequently amended in 1958, did give this uh, rise of Sri Lankan variety of English? Because for a longer time, we focus on vernacular language we totally omitted this english and then we picked it up the importance gave importance to english shehan piris tatavastava denava mama shehan piris obata avastava katha karana can i just address elandirian's question about the single only act and then okay sure okay. Uh, thank you for that question i mean you throw up a very interesting uh, 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 I mean, possibility. I haven't thought of it like that, to be very honest. But it's something you can research, actually. Because with the Singhala Only Act, it didn't, in, we know that it didn't overnight change into our vernacular languages. But at the same time, 
Professor Passe was talking about uh, Sri Lankan English or Ceylon, Ceylon English in the 40s, so way before, in, even before independence, early 40s. 48, we got independence, 56, Sikalodi Act. So uh, what's interesting is there was a hiatus. There was a gap in the, uh, like, there, uh, we don't have much research from Professor Passe's publication in 55 to the 1970s. So that could have resulted in, you know, not much interest or limited interest in uh, Sri Lankan English after the uh, after the 56 Act, because only I think uh, the Chitra Fernando uh, has written a little bit about bilingualism in Sri Lanka, then only Professor Kanda, as far as I know, has been, you know, really interested in Lankan English even uh, till, the, uh, till the mid 80s. And then we had a, quite a, a, a number of uh, researchers and academics working on it. So it's a very interesting thing you can research. You can do a bit of historical research, archival research on that. <laughs> from and quite related to that, we have another question from Varsha. Can we take okay. Lankanize in English as a subtle method of decolonizing the colonial mindset? Yes, so not very subtle uh, method of uh, decolonizing. That's why most people, uh, the people who like the idea of Sri Lankan English like it because uh, it also establishes a kind of a post-colonial identity of a Sri Lankan identity. And identity is also important. So it can be quite uh, arbitrary, it can be a bit unfixed, but uh, what we feel as our identity is a very powerful thing. So it's one way of, you know, people who speak English in this country, all of us who speak some English in this country, say we are not trying to learn this very difficult an alien and faraway standard and talk like British English. Because remember, the ELT industry would still have us do that. The global ELT industry functions, is based on the fact that many people in the world still think British English and American English are the only ways to speak. And especially in post-colonial, you know, former, former, um, uh, former colonies like India and Sri Lanka and Malaysia and uh, Singapore and even remember uh, America and Australia post-colonial former colonies of Britain. Okay, America and Australia had the same problems by of this uh, lack of acceptance, attitude, negative attitudes towards the same uh, way, the way they speak. You know, they had lots of uh, issues about you know we should speak it uh, like the Queen did or the King did at the time and not make it to sound too Australian. Australian, Australian English. There's a lot of you know, self-criticism and self-hatred about the way they speak, just like us. Okay, so... Uh, thank, thank you. We have we can answer one one comment by uh, Vishmi. If you can read it really, this is related to uh, accuracy and uh, teaching classrooms as well, teaching in classrooms. Yeah, I hope you have seen it, ma'am. I saw it. I think I uh, read it at that time. Later, I'll find it. In relation to your response to language accuracy. Right. I was, I was just wondering how language attitudes of teachers affect the perception of accuracy. Very good question. Yes. There is, uh, there is actually a lot of work done on uh, teachers' attitudes towards various varieties of English. If you just Google uh, attitudes towards uh, varieties of English, attitudes towards world English, most of the studies are done with teachers because the teacher's attitude is of utmost importance. And we know how strong teacher's attitudes, teacher's stances can uh, be, you know, if you're accepting of errors and you don't even judge them as harsh errors, you know. So some of the simplifications we make when we speak is we don't look at errors in, in, as degrees of seriousness. As Madhu says, if you look at errors as, you know, uh, a hurdle to communication, then we can see it as, you know, serious. But there are certain, but the English language teaching profession has developed on errors in pronunciation. You know, remember ESL was about errors in pronunciation initially, and we know that's uh, not valid anymore. So uh, in our context also, what I have seen is uh, uh, teachers have been taught or they, they have been pressured to think of errors as really, really serious. Any error is serious. And also teachers have very subjective views of what an error is. So whether we like it or not, people have their own perceptions of what is right and what is wrong, what is and what is wrong. 
Okay, so uh, wish me to go back to your very good comment and the rest of your question. I find myself questioning marking schemes because at times students write it in English that may not fall in the same English we perceive as accurate. But I can relate to the English they use. Yeah, that's a wonderful comment. And I all something that I have seen is often in, in gra even in grammar, when it comes to a language and accuracy, there's a whole range of uh, correctness. Right? But marking scheme will only identify one of those uh, uh, right features. And anything that falls outside is immediately considered wrong. So, I mean, exams, assessment is another, you know, it's a snake, it's a can of, other, you know, it's a can of worms. So, a lot of problems with the accuracy. And, uh, I mean, let me not get on my favorite hobby horse about how too much focused on grammar and accuracy the O-level exam is. Yeah, before we uh, wind up, really, we can answer, I think, one more question uh, they are in the chat box, really. It's about uh, native English speakers' attitude towards the Sri Lankan variety. Would okay. you like to talk about Hi. it? Hi, Damita. Uh, what were the response of native English speakers to this stylish uh, variety of so called Sri Lankan English? Very good question. Now, even when we talk about native speakers of English, that's a generalization. No? We th think of this idealized, perfect English speaking, British uh, standard uh, English speaking you know, God, who is, is there as our model. And we are not, it's not our fault that we think like this. This is how language teaching and language standards work, whether we like it or not. So when we talk about a native speaker of English, who are we talking about? Are we speaking, talking about the Queen? Are we talking about Prince Harry, who has a minor, uh, a former, you know, a uh, uh, dustman in, in, uh, in a poor part of London, okay? Remember, they are all native speakers of English, okay? So if you're thinking of a learned person, okay? One, uh, uh, an educated, average educated um, British or American speaker at a formal uh, forum, I would say that um, uh, we don't have a problem. If I think most of the academics here have presented, have studied abroad, have their PhDs from um, the UK or the US, and I don't think they have ever been unintelligible to, to academics who are the so-called native speakers of English in those, uh, uh, in those universities. So I think, in, in a, to put it very generally, I think Sri Lankan English is quite clear. <laughs> it's generally not, uh, not considered an unintelligible language. Uh, and also we tend to undermine how accepting the rest of the world is to variation. I think, especially in formal context, whether it's academia, whether it's, you know, politicians, uh, global political, um, you know, uh, forums, or even in the, even the entertainment industry, we, ha we are open to uh, variation, just as we are aware of, you know, Americans and British and Indians and us speaking differently. These people are also aware. We tend to infantilize the native speaker as well, thinking, oh, we won't be understood by a native speaker, therefore we are deficient. It's not that like that, you know, the postmodern, I mean, in the 21st century, there's so much interconnection, the, the, the interactions between countries, across people, on all sorts of platforms is so, you know, so widespread. Everybody's exposed to everybody else's uh, accents and ways of speaking. So, so to the extent that you know once again coming back to the issue of you know if you communicate effectively it's not considered uh, a problem thank you very much with that we do have to of course wind up the session because the time is up although we have some more questions i know i have seen uh, a lot of lots of questions on chat uh, like as chat uh, messages and i'm sure that you all have uh, very good responses and questions uh, to ask from uh, uh, it's Dinali Fernando, and uh, but unfortunately we do have to wind up uh, because of the time uh, uh, time schedule. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you very much, uh, I'm Dinali Fernando, for accepting our in invitation on behalf of the university of the faculty of uh, of our faculty. Really, of course, uh, she's. Uh, her, her her session and our session, as you have understood, is a very interactive and. Uh, 
you know, theoretically informed, but in presented uh, uh, everything in a very simple and comprehensive manner, uh, which can be uh, really enjoyed and understood by everybody. And thank you very much. And I should tell tell everybody that uh, she is one of the pioneering lecturers of the Department of English and Linguistics of the University of our University. Uh, she is one of the one of the few really few pioneering teachers of of department. So uh, and she has worked for us really and she has contributed her knowledge and services to the department and to, and to the university for about more than 12 years really and in a very friendly manner really thank you very much ma'am for the for the contribution and i am sure that you would uh, help us and contribute to us even in the future thank you very much thank you everybody for being in the audience and for your interactive uh, discussion and the uh, questions they're very interactive and very uh, welcoming and uh, really enjoyable thank you very much everybody would you like to say something Dinal, miss and, and, um, yes, just briefly, thank you everyone for coming. Thank, thank, you, thank you, you, thanks a lot. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Chitra. Thank you, Sister thank Lovely you so listening much. to you, Dean Lee, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> after a long time. <laughs> thanks. It's lovely seeing you after a long time, Dean Lee, like, at least like this. I'm, I'm, I must apologize for the questions and the comments not taken for the discussion, really. Perhaps you may. Uh, uh, we can uh, send the questions to Ms. Dinali Fernando later, really. It's because of the, the scheduled time frame. Yes, if you have any questions, please email me. My email address is there on my university webpage. So I'd be very happy to answer any questions you have. And if anyone would like these two articles that I referred to, I can email them to you as well. Thank you very much. And I must thank the publication committee as well for giving me this opportunity to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you to the Publications Committee as well. Bye, everyone.